Hey guys, welcome to my game reviews, and today we'll be taking a look at Mame for Droid. So, Mame for Droid was released back in December of 2011 on the Android market, and it's free for anyone to download so everyone can go and enjoy their old favorite arcade games. So here's the select screen for your games. Obviously I have quite a few that we'll be taking a look at, but first let's talk about the app a little bit. Alright, so in portrait mode you realize that you have a four button layout, but if you were to turn your phone and use landscape layout you see you only have uh, two buttons. But the other two buttons are invisible, but they're still usable. You may have also noticed that the joystick is animated. And you have the uh, you have the ability to turn that off as well as the sound to boost performance, which I do recommend for um, older phones. One last thing you can do in landscape mode is that you have the option to customize the layout, the button layout. See, so I can move this there if I wanted to, which I'm definitely not gonna. But yeah, I've obviously customized this <clears throat> myself. And this, this is a very good layout if you're going to be playing Smash TV or Total Carnage. And for some reason, the L and the R button do not show up when you're playing games. Or no, I don't actually... Ah, if you're playing games in landscape mode, the X and the Y buttons don't show up as... Uh, either, but the L and the R buttons, I don't think they actually do anything. <laughs> but yes, you have the option to customize only in, uh, only in landscape mode. Alright, now that we've talked about the app itself now, let's get to some games. Okay, I'm going to start with Alan's the arcade game. So once you select the game, you'll get to a black screen telling you what game you've selected, and it will say press any key. But instead, you should toggle with the joystick. I've run into a few problems by just pressing the buttons, but only on occasions. So here we have it, Aliens the Arcade Game. So Aliens the Arcade Game it's a side-scrolling run-and-gun game, very similar to Contra, since both were made by Konami. But you lack the ability to jump, and have gained a small health bar instead of one-hit deaths. But the game is very basic. You fight through hordes of xenomorphs and fight boss. It's very fun and can take about 30 to 40 minutes to beat. Here are one of the bosses. The bosses and the aliens themselves vary in size, shape, and color. It's very strange. And at one point in the game, you're even fighting like zombie people. It's pretty bullshit. But other than that, it's a very fun arcade game. So, moving on to Caveman Ninja. With a name like that, you can't really know what to expect. Well, actually, it's Joe and Mac on the SNES, but not as good as the SNES port. Because when you die in the SNES port, you respawned right where you died. But in the arcade game, you have to start the whole level over again. And that hurts it a bit. But it's still a lot of fun. And actually, the, the uh, level design in the SNES version, I believe, was enhanced a bit. Like, in the first level here, it's... A little bit longer than in the arcade game. But as you can see here, you have a different, you have another power up here that you shoot out yourself. That wasn't seen in the SNES port. Next, we have Contra. What else is there to say about Contra besides that you're a guy running and gunning down tons of enemies and huge bosses to make it to the end and kill Red Falcon? Unfortunately, you have three lives and three continues like in the original SNES version, but you don't have a 30 lives code, so you're not going to make it very far.
Next, we have a favorite of mine in the run and gun genre on the arcade. It's Cyberlip. You are a Duke Nukem lookalike, tearing through swarms of robots and fighting huge bosses. It's just like the rest of the run and gun games, but this one's actually uh, a lot like the Metal Slug series, and is uh, some of the guys who worked on this game went on to work on the Metal Slug games. So, if you're a fan of Metal Slug, play this one. Here, one of those bosses I was talking about. I mean, look at this gigantic red monstrosity. It's awesome. And you actually have a uh, you have uh, five or six different weapons you can uh, scroll through at any time. Like on this boss, I'm using the auto fire weapon, and you have like bazookas and such. Speaking of nasty monstrosities, here we have the horror classic Splatterhouse. You're Rick and you're trying to save your girlfriend Jennifer by slaughtering your way through tons of gross monsters to get her. This game is perfect for anyone who loves horror movies and is full of different horror movie references. I mean, the game is just beautifully detailed in all its scariness, I don't even know how to put it. Yet another run and gun game, it's Total Carnage, another personal favorite, where you gun down super massive amounts of enemy soldiers and fight unstoppable bosses. By the way, when you're playing this one, if whenever you're trying to set a bomb in any of the certain levels, because there are certain points of the game where you will need to blow open a fence or a door of some sort, you will need to press the start button which will also spawn the second player, which is a minor inconvenience. But it's still a fun game no matter what. And here we have the final game I'll be looking at. It's War of the Worlds. It's an addicting shooter game based on the 1950s sci-fi movie of the same name. But basically, you're just shooting down alien spacecraft. It's a lot of fun, and it's very simple. Avoid, you know, this uh, alien's fire and shoot them down. So that is Mame for Droid. It's free and it's fun, so if you're looking for some arcade action on the go, give it a download. And a good place for ROMs is um, www.dgmu.com. So have fun and please subscribe.